Vladimir, you are a long-term Remarkable user. You've been there since the Remarkable one, but recently you've been trying out, I know, the Supernote. What's your kind of laptop keyboard's best friend here? What's the device that you want right by your larger productivity machine, your laptop? Uh, yeah, I've been trying the Supernote Nomad recently uh, for the past, since December, so about three months now. And it's just a really cool little device. I, I still really like the Remarkable in my workflow, but I think the Nomad has actually supplemented it a lot in uh, different settings. And like you're talking about next to your laptop, this has recently kind of found its way next to my laptop more than the Remarkable. And just a really, really neat device. I know the last time we were on a kind of live stream, we talked about like the pens and all that. And I'm kind of really in love with these as well. Yeah, it really is nice, yeah. And uh, you've also recently had a little bit of experience with the Kindle Scribe, and I put out a couple of videos or a few things. Yeah, the Scribe, I really I really use more to read and sometimes kind of do annotations on books and whatnot and like save notes and stuff. So that's a, I mean, that's a fantastic device as well. It's, you really can't beat it on the savings, I think. Yeah. Just because mm -hmm. Amazon can do that. But companies, right. I, I know like Supernote has talked about the reason why they don't really do sales is because they end up getting all these returns and then it like flusters their employees and that's right around the holidays. So I think they kind of keep consistent in their pricing. Yeah, so, it has. Yeah, the, uh, yeah the, the previous generation stayed the same price, which at least that's predictable. And at least they're back in their product long term. They're not just sort of thinking, well, we make a bunch and then we get rid of inventory ready to put out the next one, that kind of ordinary cycle. You really discussed that in your video about the Remarkable too, which you should all check out, by the way. It's titled something like, is there a Remarkable 3 coming? Or it discusses the kind of next generation. And the thumbnail is like Remarkable 1, 2, and then, well, what's next for them? It's really interesting. And points, I don't want to get, get bogged down into the old kind of argument with Remarkable of like, uh, are they remarkable on a hardware company or a software company or a marketing company? But certainly it's interesting to think where they're going to go. Are they going to have to have a little bit of a reply after this this device? sort of seems to have taken everyone's imagination right now. Yeah, and I know I know a lot of people are pretty excited from what I've seen in, in comment sections about the uh, A5X2 that's supposedly yeah. coming this year, just a, like a larger version of this. Yeah, but this size is pretty nice, right next yeah. to a sort of laptop, isn't it? And your, your recent video with your travel laptop, I think this sort of size, yeah, I think yeah, that's... I, I, sometimes, like on the desk I am right now, it's a little bit of a smaller desk. So I actually find that like the remarkable is a little too big sometimes because yeah. if I want to have like my mouse and like other things and then the tablet, the Nomad just like sits perfectly right where I need it. Yeah. And uh, with traveling, it's just so nice. A little bit of a comparison as well for you. Um, although I've got loads of comparison videos with the Remarkable and the Supernote already and lots of discussion about that. And there's lots of technical things here, but this is really about that kind of experience sitting next to your more product productivity orientated machine. I don't think many of us are giving up on the idea of using a laptop or a desktop. So what I'm curious though, what are you currently using day, day to day right now since you've had, if you had this a couple of weeks now, three weeks, how long? The, the Nomad? Yeah. I got it in December right before the holidays. So I've consistently been using it. I was actually, like we had talked about in the Remarkable 3 wishlist video you were uh, mentioning, mm -hmm. how you wanted a drawing app. <laughs> they have Atelier now. And yeah. so that was like, I, I know when you got yours, like you had to, it, it's funny because it didn't come preloaded with it. You had to like install an update. Exactly. And then uh, that was like the first thing I did. And I tried it out and I immediately was like, wow, this is exactly, cool, isn't it? this is exactly yeah. what we wanted. Right. Um, yeah, I, even, I even emailed Supernote after and I was like, you guys did it. Like you kind of, you created that. I mean, I, I still have things that I'd like to see improved on Atelier, but yeah, they really created that, that kind of actual like s pencil sketching feel where you yeah. can control the the type of pencil you're using and they have the their eraser is fantastic you can really de-shade like i was talking about and also yeah it's just yeah it's just awesome to see on this I'm using it a lot too right yeah I, I had this i went to a museum with my daughter and i, I was uh, sketching some statues and things at the museum and this is what i'm just showing there but it's really really lovely to use and i think it is just it, it's bringing that sort of use case that bit further but not just by just saying well all right you can have any app on there now it's it's really making things bespoke to this device. And I think that's really it. Has it, first of all, managed to replace your Remarkable entirely in the kind of two months that you've been using it? I would say no to replacing, but has it 
taken some of my attention away from the remarkable absolutely i got the uh did you get the white version or the crystal yeah, one no yeah i got the same the crystal yeah yeah the crystal i really like having the upgradable storage too yeah it's really nice the one thing i i think just honestly like the pen feel i can write a lot neater on this than i can on the remarkable i don't know about you yeah like my penmanship is just generally better on this i think that's the feel of the pen like as in this sort of physical way the pen looks and feels like a pen and then yeah. i just think it's the way that the kind of the, the screen grips that bit more the, the pen it just gives you that bit more control uh, i just think it just feels easier to write like that yeah and i think it's something also about the tip yeah like i've always liked really fine tip pens and mechanical pencils and it just feels exactly like that yeah it does and do you use the standard pen more or do you use the heart of metal pen more i have been using this one this yeah. is the one that i've been using just because it's the newer one and i'm trying out this sort of newer device and living with it it hasn't but at first i thought the kind of slightly rattliness of it yeah that little shake bothered me but it hasn't and that's an interesting one I, I did think that i'd stick the heart of metal and go with it i still think the heart of metal is the better pen but yeah, I don't. It I is a it is a fun fidgety toy, right? For writing, and as you say now, it's like they've always had this tagline for those who write, and now they've added this sort of for those who draw. They haven't said it like that, but I think I think it is for those who draw as well. And it is just like for your creative person, right next to your keyboard. I, I think that's where they're going. And whereas I think remarkable and marketing more in your kind of business meeting category, I think this now is your sort of creative person, which is it's you and I really, and that's our, our use case for the laptops is our use case for these things as well. I think you've given us at least two things you're really liking about it over the remarkable, but uh, I guess two things that you aren't, aren't liking so much. Aside from aesthetics and lack of distraction, what does Remarkable 2 have over something like the Scribal and Note Air 3? Not a lot, to be quite honest. It Just is simplicity, I think. Yeah. It's ease of use, just for it to be slipping in there straight in there like like a notebook and not being distraction, having that focus on one thing, I would say. Yeah. So Kit, that that is one thing that I've found to be not a pain point of the the nomad, but like something that is it takes a little bit of getting used to, just like all the the gestures, the yeah kind of interface of the software there's no yeah. like there's no typical home screen like the remarkable has yeah i think that's it so for me i make my own sort of at this contents page this is fast becoming my my home screen and then i go here and i've got my sort of my main teaching documents that i need here for sort of faster uh, access to those and yeah and in, in here i've got my planner and um, any kind of important first access things it is a bit, bit of getting used to it is weird how they haven't just made a home kind of total home screen i think it is about making it your own really i do agree in some ways this the gestures to some extent they take a bit of getting used to i think there yeah. are times when i've had to swipe this down like two or three times before it's responded for some reason so one thing that i was i was telling you about was like when you do two fingers and then you loop something with the pencil i, f I figured out what i was doing wrong if you have your fingers too close to each other yeah it doesn't work you need a little separation yeah it is just about getting used to it and the same with this is like does it want it really slow or does it want it quite fast on this bar and it's got the two fingers like to select on the screen as yeah it? Two that, that feature i actually really like yeah i think that's a really clever thing i don't know why nobody else has copied that one to be honest I, I've, I've just found sometimes like the undo and the redo here where you swipe yeah. up and down i've sometimes found that it like it just feels a little either laggy or it feels like sometimes it doesn't register one of my inputs i don't know if you found the same yes i think but but I, again i think it's more like if when you live with it for a longer time like learning curve yeah you do and and i'd all, already got used to that kind of the, the two finger on the page it, it used to be before they had this left hand it used to be two finger on the page was erase and i'd gotten used to that and the way they did it you know i was i was getting really frustrated because it doesn't always if you put your fingers down here it doesn't yeah it does now i think but like they kind of have this idea of like the pen shadow if you put your fingers here yeah. see if i put my fingers where my hand shadow is it hasn't registered but if i put my fingers outside of my hand sh shadow then it does register does that make sense yeah so i imagine this area is now is now completely given away to palm rejection when i when i bring my pen close to it it's thinking anything where my hand might be because it knows I'm right-handed yeah. and they're very good for left-handers as well, then it's going to ignore that. So it doesn't do an accidental press. But one thing I think as well, this is really good, the, the sort of rotate with the auto rotate, and it is really good for that intention. But now I occasionally get accidental presses 
with my palm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, is like, yeah. So they just need a software there that says, okay, you've rotated into landscape. So ignore the bottom bar. Ignore the bottom, yeah. Yeah, I do like, I use, I, I like using Atelier in the landscape. The landscape mode, yeah. I found the uh, same thing regarding the Nomad being really good for notes. Reading a markup PDF is challenging, interesting. Do you find, yes, I have certainly found that landscape helps with a PDF. Because this PDF, for instance, that I would just show if I go last open document, this is an A4 PDF. So even having it down at A5 sizes, a push. Luckily, my eyes aren't too old at the minute. You can do the pinch and zoom thing, although it's not available in half page view. So you can in the normal view, but not in this view. So, you know, you're kind of stuck like this. But that is why I think we mentioned it, that a lot of people maybe should wait for the A5X2 if you can bring yourself yeah. to wait that long. With fine text stuff like that, it's not, I mean, it's nice because it's a 300 PPI screen, so it looks very sharp, but it is small, right? Like I personally don't find that I use the the PDF feature a lot on it just because it's it's smaller. Yeah, and, and the nice thing is I've found that rather than, oh, you see, now we're having a, we've talked about it three times, I've tried to swipe the thing. The nice thing is that for my school planner now, I don't really want to open this because it's reminding me that tomorrow is back to school after half term. But is this is not a PDF, although it was made as a PDF, and now it is the background, it's the template for a note document. And now what I have here, I still have all of the notes functions, so I can still use the headings, I can still use the star marks to do my sort of to do lists. Uh, and this just means anywhere there's a star mark, there's a job for me to to do, and I can skip to those pages that way. So this is really good. You kind of don't need to use the PDF as a planner so much anymore. It is just for your reference documents as well. And then the last one in the, so far, that smudging racing feature for drawing does sound appealing. Yeah, that's a bit of the, I tell you, I haven't really, it's because I don't make mistakes actually, but it is nice having like lots of options for your erasers. I mean, like that is something that nobody's really, I don't see that much on any drawing app really. Um, yeah, there's there's, there's, there's like down eraser. Five options or something, or five options. Yeah, it, it's yeah, nice. I mean, it's great, isn't it? It's really, yeah. And it's from a software perspective, it's really not that hard to program an eraser no. like that, right? Like. It's um, it's perplexing to me that a lot of people don't have that feature. Is the the A five X not the X two the X? Mm. Does that have Atelier? Yeah, it does now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Got- it was in beta last time. I tried to install it. Pretty sure that's now in the public and the full version now. I want to talk a little bit about the actual sort of. The, the benefits of having a notebook and really why these digital notebooks and why over paper, why, why, why do handwritten notes matter in 2024? And I was thinking about these pages that I made way back on Remarkable One and they've carried over here. And I was thinking about these little diagrams that I drew from, it was during COVID times actually. So these were online lectures and I was sitting with the Remarkable One. And it's, I don't remember all of the detail of this Keta eight steps to change method here this this kind of is a leadership model i don't remember everything about the lecture where he talked about this idea of weighing the pig have you heard this idea like you're constantly measuring rather than actually feeding the pig right and i look back at this i go i can't remember all these details here but i can i can remember this page and this page and the eight steps to change page comes to mind in the middle of my work life when i'm having to think right how am i going to get my team to to this point, how am I going to lead them through this kind of change? And my point's not about the leadership model. My point is when you make notes in this way, it lives with you. Like three years later on, I'm still thinking, I'm still imagining this page of notes that I made during a lecture about change when I'm trying to do that thing. And I think that's why people, it really resonates with people like us, professional people, knowledge workers who are working on their computer, which is this kind of difficult to control sometimes this huge thing that we have to get through the software and can be incredibly powerful incredibly useful we're going to open this up and get it booted up and sort of drive this machine to do our tasks but yet having this having something like this just next door to the keyboard like this for your thinking that's why the idea is resonating with so many people the idea of making notes not just in a not taking notes, not just writing something down that somebody's told you is important, but making a set of notes that you go back to time and time again. It's something that really engages your brain. It's different to the act of sort of typing through or working on any kind of productivity kind of app here on a laptop or a desktop. It is a different sort of experience. And it's one, if you haven't considered with it and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, watch a lot of content on these e-ink tablets and they're quite compelling and I'm not sure whether I should dive straight in. 
if you are asking yourself those questions, then you're probably finding the the laptop on its own isn't doing everything for you. And I would suggest having an e-ink tablet next to a keyboard like this is something that you will get along well, well with. You, you will find those digital benefits because I'm also hearing that people are saying, well, how can these companies want to charge me almost 500 quid for something to replace paper when paper works just as well for that? There are just that number of benefits to allow you to get this into the digital space quite quickly and work between those two things. You're talking about paper, but this to me is really smart paper. Like yeah. there are so many tools and features I can use to, if I'm note taking and I miss something, I can quickly push things down, restructure, reorganize, yeah. lasso things, copy things, duplicate things. And it just, yeah, it just feeds into the workflow better. Yeah, so you can just move this off to the side, make an extra little note down Instead here. Instead of having to either erase it and rewrite it or just like start fresh and rewrite your notes on a new page. Absolutely, yeah. Which is a time a time suck. And the undo button is always yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that that's it. It's a 50-page document, this notebook, which is still there, carried in the same sort of form factor. But it would have been, I imagine, it would have been lost maybe in a notebook that I'd stopped carrying around three years later. I wouldn't be able to reference it back that quickly and easily and find out what's the name of that model. What's the details about that now that I'm ready to do that kind of deeper thinking. You'd kind of discussed how you digest a lot more when you actually take notes on, on paper or e-paper, whatever. So like for our discussion later, we're going to talk about PCs. Like I have these notes where I was able to organize things, highlight with marker, just like really kind of point out things. And the way I organized it, is like I was watching a lecture and then I quickly structured it in ways where after I wrote it, I already remembered it. And then I reviewed it yesterday. And so now in my mind, I can like visualize that note and like remember parts of it. Mm -hmm. Whereas when I'm typing, I really feel like it's active versus almost passive thing. When mm -hmm. I'm typing, I'm typing so quickly that yes, it's like I'm getting my thoughts out on the paper, but I'm not remembering a lot of it because I'm not like writing every single stroke of every single letter. So I, th I think personally for me, it's a very active thing when I'm taking notes like next to my laptop with the Nomad or the Remarkable versus typing, which I can type relatively quickly. So it's, it's like autopilot almost. It's kind of like you're getting the idea out, but you need to form the idea for that typing to be really, really focused and meaningful and, and, and contain that deep knowledge, that wealth of knowledge. And I've just shown you a little bit of the, those notebooks that I then had to organize that into the, the final kind of project, the write-up of my senior leaders course that I was doing. Having those notes to go through those made that process of then typing was just like, it, it was far less broken because I wasn't having to, oh, think about that, move off the tab, I'd go to a different place to find that bit of research again. But it was right there on the remarkable next door to my laptop that I was typing away on. We're talking about these two devices uh, rather than talking about the other ones at this point, because we're talking about devices that aid you getting into that flow state when you're working, when you're working with your knowledge, when you're putting that together for an audience maybe or for a project of any kind of kind and we're, we're 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 talking about getting into that flow state and a lot of you will be thinking to yourself which one of these two is the most conducive to that flow state i hope everyone here kind of recognizes what i'm talking about about that state of flow it's when work kind of just hours go by and, if, and it feels like you've only been a couple of minutes and you've been co totally absorbed and you haven't had to be you know you you really love that you feel like connected to something bigger the challenges match the kind of skill level is the way Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, who really worked on this stuff in the 90s, puts it. You know, it's a really amazing thing when you realize, when you recognize that isn't just accidental and you find ways of getting into those states and staying into those states and they're where you make your best work. So the question is, which one of these two keeps you in that flow state for the longest? And I think I have to concede that currently I get that flow state broken a little bit more often here than on the remarkable. And I think that might be because of this kind of, we talk about ease of use versus sort of fully featured and maybe just a couple of those things you're alluding to like missed keys on here. It has those extra features. Those are really good quality of life improvements, how they're referred to quite a lot. But if they don't work every time, or if you're like, oh, how, what was that gesture again that takes me back to there or, now, where's my homepage? <laughs> like any of those little things. Yeah. Maybe that isn't as 
flowier device. And when I went back, when I made some scoring, a scoring system for my reviews, a really clever commenter said, add a subjective box. And I think the subjective box is where the remarkable is 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 king, really. They they don't add they add things slowly, they add features slowly because they do spend time thinking about will these interrupt the kind of focus of the device? And so does Supernote, incidentally. But mm-hmm. Supernote respond far more to that's the true. needs and the wants of their audience, their buyers. And I think that so, is another strategy. So that's kind of interesting, Kip, because I feel like in some senses, the remarkable getting updated slowly might feed better into the user experience because mm-hmm. if you've had it for four years since it came out, like you've slowly seen these things and you've probably like put them to memory better. The new things like one of the new things I use on the Remarkable Bunch now is the, the line snapping feature, but that was added in maybe like oh, yeah. a software or two software pushes ago. Yeah. But it's just all those little things. Like I, I just remember now because there's only like one or two big updates every time. The th- last time when we had talked about the Remarkable, I think they had just added the, the kind of Android feature where you can select text and like choose the endpoint and stuff, yeah. which is, yeah, a little late to the game, but yeah. It's like one, one, when a new feature comes to the Remarkable, you're very aware of it, I think. And that makes you kind of want to use it more. And then it makes it easier to remember because there aren't that many. Interesting. That is a very interesting discussion. I, I hope you sort of all in the audience sort of take that for what it is. And th- I'm not saying that I've, I think these are the two kind of flow champions right here. Maybe when this is the same size, when this kind of next generation of Supernova gets this same size, maybe maybe it'll be there. I know Jeffrey Moss pointed out in his review that, that you miss more finger presses on here than you do for the other devices. That's, that's maybe true. Yeah, I kind of, I I agree completely. So I actually now, I just, I, I try to just use the pen for every yeah, button yeah. I press. It just, it works better. Might be due to the smaller size as well. It's yeah, I think it is. Yeah. A, a fine point. Yeah, actually. I think what it is is they've, it's basically the same software shrunk down. So I think the kind of active area of the each icon is a bit too small on the here. activation press area. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Did you find it hard to go from the larger size to the A? Surprisingly not, actually. So much less than I thought of them. And, and I think that's because, as you pointed out, at work, it's my work laptop and this, but this just works so well here. Next I, had, one, I had zero uh, transition issues. Like it was, it just felt right at home. And like I said, the, the pen feels in my opinion, it's so much better than mm. it just, it felt more natural. It felt like actual paper. The one thing I will say with the folio, if if you have it just flat like this, when it's like open kind of like that, or even like this, mm. I find it to be uncomfortable right. when I'm writing on a desk. It's too raised and it's too right. lifted. And I just, I find that my penmanship yeah. isn't as good, but if I just take the Nomad and just throw it on the desk, mm. then that's when I have the best penmanship and it just feels more comfortable. I don't know if you've noticed the same thing. I, I don't, but I, 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 a lot of people do talk about that and I, I understand it, but I don't mind the case. It might just be because I'm used to the Remarkable, but I was yeah. thinking about this other day too. And I think it's because they don't have like the most rounded edges. They're a little more squared off. So I kind of feel that when I'm, it's, it's like pressing in a little bit, mm-hmm. but I do find when I just have the Nomad on the table, it's negligible. But mm. I, I really notice it when it's in the folio. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's not something. Yeah, that I'd say that's bothered me. But I think that that is. It seems to be quite a common. And that that's one. just definitely maybe just a personal thing. But yeah, so I guess if you're in the audience to think about this, well, ask yourself do, if you're writing on a thick notepad, if you're writing on a thick pad of paper, you got your 150 refill pad or whatever, and you you. Does that annoy you rather than do you need to get quite a thin notepad to write 